First, giving honor to God, who is the author and perfecter of my faith, I greet you this glorious day with joy and with love. I give God thanks for you. And those that are worshiping with us online, thank you for joining us. We're going to do a little deviation from the lectionary today. And God gave me this, um, this message this morning, and so it's coming to us from Psalms 139. And I will read for your hearing from the New International Version of the Bible, Psalms 139, verses 1 to 12, and then verses 22 and 23. Hear ye the word of the Lord. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Verse 23, search me, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way for everlasting. Search me, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. A quest to be known. A quest to be known. Let us look to the Lord. O thou in whose presence my soul does take delight. In times of affliction I call, my comfort by day and my joy in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. Eternal and wise God, I humbly come before you right now, this weak vessel of clay. O oh Lord, take me deep down in your treasures and not hold my sins against me at this hour. But merciful Lord, bring forth your preacher with all power and with all might. Bring forth a word of love and a word of healing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord. You are my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God do say amen. Amen, amen, and amen. A quest to be known. A quest to be known. Summer is my favorite time of the year. I enjoy the warm weather and the long days because they afford me as well as everyone an opportunity to go outside, to take long walks, to garden, to go swimming, or to visit with family and friends. The warm weather gives me the opportunity to wear lighter and fewer clothing. It gives me an opportunity to experience just in a small way what it must have been like to live in the Garden of Eden. Yes, it is true that our temperature here in our summers are not perfect. And, and really, right now, it's a little hot. It's a little hot. It's a little hot. However, 
the summer affords me the opportunity as well as all of us. I mean, we don't have to wear hats, per se, all the time. I mean, when we're out in the sun, we really should not to get skin cancer, but we don't have to wear it all the time. And we don't have to wear gloves and coats and boots and all the other get-ups that we have to wear when the elements are, are cold and, and dark and, and just not comfortable. Summertime. Oh, this summertime. It is just wonderful. We get to wear t-shirts and shorts and kulaks and sandals. We get to go barefoot. Oh, the summertime. We just love the summertime. We love it. The only problem with the summer and wearing less clothing is that more of our skin is exposed. <laughs> more of our skin is exposed. And did you know that um, when our skin, our skin itself being exposed, people tend to look at us a certain way. They, they, they look up and down at our, our skin and take, take note of different things that have happened. Uh, what, what do you mean by that? What I'm saying is that people t look at our skin and they sometimes make an opinion, form an opinion about us, where we've been and what we've done. But did you know that our skin is a living organ? It's a living organ, just like the internal organs. Our skin protects our internal systems from being harmed. Over the course of time, you know, our skin sometimes reveals our story, aspects of our story, how we've lived our lives and things that we've encountered. I mean, what do I mean by that? I mean mosquito bites. <laughs> I mean, poison ivy and poison oak. And sometimes, you know, our skin reveals that we've led and encountered hardship in life. So, you know, all of us take time to take care of our skin. Oh, we take time to eat right and get our rest. We take time in putting on lotion and creams so that our skin stays moist and in commercials, they say, so it'll be tight, you know, not hanging, flapping, wrinkly. <laughs> we sometimes, and I hope oftentimes, we put on sun repellent and insect repellent to avoid additional damage to our skin. I don't know about you, but just the other day, there was some advertisement on television that I saw again and again. And it was a commercial talking about individuals skin, when you look at a person, oh, the people, they were all different kinds of people, various ages. But you know, they all had the same statement. They all said, see me. I want everyone just to be able to see me. This commercial brought to focus how we don't always see people. Instead, we form biases and we, we mistreat them and people feel lonely and fearful, all because of the imperfections of their skin. You know, some people, some people have eczema and some people have all different forms of skin disease, psoriasis. This particular commercial for Cursasis Corsasis, which is, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a pill that you can take that is promises to clear up your skin from the inside out. I tell you, this month, the beginning of this month, I had this rose bush and I got into some poison ivy. Some poison ivy and some poison oak, and I don't know if you noticed it or not, but for the past two weeks I was covered, even though I had gloves and long sleeves. What can I tell you? suffering with it, scars of it. And then just yesterday, I thought I had gotten rid of it all, and in it, I got again. So, <laughs> you know, creams and ointments and all kinds of things. But when you wear no sleeves and shorts and people see your skin, I mean patches on our knees from kneeling or work scrubbing floors or, or just simply praying. We all just want to be on that quest where people know us, get to know us, not 
know us based on what they see on our skin. So see me. That's what they say in a commercial. We want to be seen. We want to be seen. So not to look at our skin and see the imperfections, or not to see our sins, our faults, but really to see me, to see us. Taking medication is one way that individuals travel down the journey on their quest to be known. Known for who they are, their gifts and their talents. Not known by what you see, preconceived ideas. We often say to ourselves and each other, who really knows us? I mean, who really knows us? Some would say the people that really know us are our family, our friends, our neighbors, maybe even our, our employer. Truth be told, they only know us in part. In our text, we see in this Psalm 139, we see that David is exploring the doctrine of omniscience. Omniscience, O-M-N-I-S-C-I-E-N-C-E. What does that mean, this big fancy word? It means that God is everywhere. He's everywhere. And you know what? He knows us. He sees us. The scriptures tell us that God knows everything about us. Another fancy word is omnipresent. How can God know us? Well, the scriptures tell us that he created us in our mother's womb, and he knew us before he even created us. But because God is omnipresent, he, like no one, is always with us. God sees us for who we are. People don't really see us. They only see us in part. And even then, there's a thin veneer, a screen. They don't intimately know us. So we ask each other, are you known? Many people are on the quest to be known, to have their names written down in history, to be known in their community, to be known in a church, to be known in their families for what they do and what they've done, maybe even for what they have. But the Bible tells us that God knows us. And we don't need to be on a quest to be known because he already knows us. How is it that God knows us? John 4, 20, John 4 verse 24 reminds us that God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if I desire, if I am aching inside, have this longing to be known. You may have lived for many, many years, but still there's just a little something inside of you when you're in that quiet place where you desire to be known. You desire to be heard. You desire to be understood. You desire to be fully and completely loved. The quest to be known. If you are on this quest to be made known, to be known by someone unconditionally, how can we achieve our goal to be known? The Bible says that the way in which we can be known completely and fully and richly and continuously is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the only one who knows us completely. But to fill that hole, that space inside of us, that ache to be known, only God can fill that. And it is filled when we enter into a relationship with him and we are with him and talking to him day by day, moment by moment. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 55 and 6, Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. Psalms 145 verse 18 remind us 
that the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Acts reminds us in Acts chapter 17, verse 27, that they should seek God in hope that they might feel their way towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far off. He is with each of us. The quest to be known. We are fully known and understood and accepted and completely loved at all times and in all places by God. When we humbly come before him and confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that he is Lord, confessing our sins and establishing that relationship with him fills the void, the ache, the longing to be known. We don't need our names written on signs and we don't need our names appearing in the newspaper or on television. No, to be known to be really understood and loved is to be one with God. How can I be in relationship with the Lord? Well, first we already know that Romans 10 and 9 tell us, confessing our, with our mouths and believing in our hearts that he's Lord. But how do we maintain a relationship with the Lord? Simply follow him. Follow him. Walk with him day by day. Open up our Bibles and read and learn of him. Sing songs about him and to him. Do his will. Obey his commands. The Bible tells us in John 14, verse 21, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. In other words, when we obey God's commandments and laws, we are one with him, and we feel his presence, and there's no hole inside of us, no aching desire to be known, because I am already completely and fully known by God. See me. Each of us have a desire to be seen. See me. Each of us seek out to be heard and understood, to be valued and respected. See me. We cannot seek these things out in the fullness in one another because humanity is imperfect, is sinful. But we can receive the fullness of all we seek to be known completely and fully when we have a relationship with Christ. The Bible reminds us that he knows the very hairs on our head. Even if we don't have any, he remembers the hairs he gave us. Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 and 30. He knows us. We are known by him. Why? He knows our name. People may call us something else, not the name our mothers and fathers have given us. God knows our name. Exodus chapter 33, 12 and 17. He sees us even when we think we cannot be seen. He knows our heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. He knows our thoughts. See me. He understands how we think. See me. Job chapter 42, verse 2. See me. Understand my worries and concerns. Jesus is the only one that fully and completely understands our worries and concerns. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 and 34. Beloved, if you are on a quest to be seen, if you are traveling on this life journey to be fully known, 
working hard on your job, doing all kinds of things for your family, working hard here in the church, working hard in the community. If you feel inside, I am just not known. I offer you Christ. He knows you. That void inside of your heart can be filled when you enter into a personal relationship with him. He sees us. He knows us. He can fill that space with love and confidence and assurance. And the quest to be known is fulfilled only in Christ Jesus. Amen.